guys, so today the book fair came to my school, and I wanted to do a book fair haul, and, um, I got six books, and I only spent 20 bucks, it was a BOGO sale, and it was awesome, so, um, I read the first book to the series, it was called Deep Blue, and then I got the last two books, Dark Tide and Rogue Wave, yeah, and they're actually, it was actually a really good first book. And I'll read the summaries. Seraphina, Neela, and Ling, Ava, and Becca, and Astrid, six mermaids from Rome scattered through the seas and fresh waters were summoned to the leader of the river witches to learn an incredible truth. The mermaids are directed descendants of the six who ruled powerful mages who once governed the lost empire of Atlantis. The ancient evil that destroyed Atlantis is stirred again, and the only mermaids that and the only mermaids that can defeat it. To do so, they need to find the magical talismans that belong to the six. That belong to the six. Um. Yeah, Seraphina, Seraphina believes that her talisman was buried with an old shipwreck. While researching its location, she almost discovered by death by a death rider led by someone familiar. The pain of seeing him turn and turned to traitor is devastating. Neela travels to Metali to warn her parents of the grave threat facing their world, but find her story outlandish, and a sign that she needs to be confined to her chamber for the rest of the recovery. She escapes and travels to Kindina, where her talisman is, is in possession of a fearsome razor-mouthed dragon. As they hunt for the talismans, both Seraphina and Neela find reserve, reserves of courage, cunning, and cunning that they didn't see that they possessed. They face down danger and death to endure a game-changing betrayal as shocking as Rogue Wave. So yeah, that's Rogue Wave. And then there's this one, The Dark Tide. And this one it says, Seraphina, lost to uncertain prin once a lost uncertain princess, is now a confident leader of the Black Fins, a ragtag group of soldiers trying to sabotage her traitorous uncle and his death riders. While Valerio and his wife plot their takeover and of all the Mer realms, Sarah works to enlist allies for battle. Meanwhile, her mermaid friends face challenges of their own. Ling is the hold of Rafe, uh, is in hold of Rafe Mfim's trawler in her way to prison camp. Becca meets with the Astrid and learns why Andalinian mermaid, why the Andalinian mermaid is always so angry and she is hiding a shameful secret. Ava can't return home because death riders await her arrival. Time is running out in their search for four talismans that still must be found if they are to defeat the ancient evil, ancient evil that destroyed As Atlantis. And Cruella, um, it's, get, it is getting more and more difficult for Madi, Seraphina's betrothed, to keep up the Russ ruse that he is in love with the treacherous Lucia Volnero. Of anyone becomes suspicious, his life and Sarah's, all of Sarah's hopes, will be extinguished, Poli political intrigue, dangerous lay sons, and spine-tingling suspense swirl like maelstrom in this pe penultimate book of water fire saga. So yeah, these two are two I've been waiting to find for a while now because I read the first book for school and I thought it was really good. And I also got it for Christmas, so... The first one's Deep Blue. The books are by Jennifer Dinelli, and you should get them. And then, I got this one, Beautiful Creatures. See, I just thought it had a cool cover, and it was on sale for four bucks, so I kind of got it, and I read the back, and it seemed kind of interesting. And I'll read the back to you. Lena did I can't even pronounce her last name. I'll just try it. I don't know. 
is unlike anyone of the small southern town of Gatlin has ever seen. She's struggling to conceal her power and curse that has haunted her family for generations. But even within the overgrown gardens, murky swamps, and crumbling graveyards of forgotten south, a secret cannot be stay hidden forever. Ethan White, who has been counting the months until he can escape from Gatlin, is haunted by a dream of a beautiful girl he has never met. When Lena moves into town, the oldest town's oldest and most infamous plantation, Ethan is inexplicably drawn to her and is determined to, un to uncover and determined to uncover the connection between them. In a town with no surprises, one secret can change everything. And this is by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. So yeah, it seems interesting. I haven't really looked into it that much yet, but I thought it looked cool and it sounds cool. So I'm gonna read it and then I might let you guys know in a later video when I'm done reading it. Okay, next one, let's see, I got three more. All of them are horror books, because <laughs> I'm weird like that. Um, let's just do the top one. The Good Girls of Hysteria Hall. Um, in this asylum, your mind plays tricks on you all the time. Delia's new house isn't just a house. Long ago, it was an insane asylum nicknamed Hysteria Hall. However, many of the inmates were not insane. Just defiant and strong-willed, kind of like Delilah herself. But the house will, the house still wants to keep troubled girls locked away. So in the most horrifying way, Delilah gets trapped, and and that's when she learns the house is also haunted. Ghost girls wandered around the ha halls in their old-fashioned nightgowns, and has some go and a handsome ghost boy named Theo roams the grounds. Delilah finds that all the spirits are unsettled and full of dark secrets. The house as well harbors shocking truths within its walls. Truths that only Delilah can uncover that may set her free. But she she'll need to act quickly before the house's power overtakes everything she loves. And this one is by Kitty Allender. And I like some, I don't know, I'm a big fan of more you know, sci-fi and that kind of stuff, but I used to enjoy horror, so I think I might enjoy this one, as long as these other two that are also, um, horror. This one's called The Ghost of Greylock. I started reading this one today. I actually only read, like, the first two sentences, but I started reading it, and it's by Dan Poblocki. I think I'm saying that correct. Um, that's how you spell it. Um, and this is the back. Everyone's heard the stories about Greylock Hall. It was meant to be a place of healing, a hospital where children and teenagers with mental disorders could be cared for and perhaps even cured. But something went wrong. Several young patients died under mysterious circumstances. And eventually, the hospital was shut down. The building abandoned and left to rot in deep in the woods. As a new kid in town, Neil Cady wanted to see Greylock for himself, especially since rumors has it that the building is haunted. He's got fresh batteries in his flashlight and a camera to document the adventures and new best friend watching his back. Neil might think he's prepared for what he'll find in the dark, dreadful asylum, but, he certainly but he's certainly not prepared for what follows him home. Scary suspense will and surprising. Dan Pavlaki's latest ghost story will keep you turning pages deep into dead of the night. So yeah, there's that book. And then this is the last one I got. Um, it's The Haunting of Sunshine Girl. And it's by Paige McKenzie. And I've heard Paige McKenzie's a really good art, um, author. Um, I don't really know what she's really written before. But this is the back. Shortly after her 16th birthday, Sunshine Griffith and her mother Kat moved from sunny Austin, Texas to the Range Ranch town of Ridgemont, Washington. Though Sunshine is adopted, she and her mother have always been close, sharing a special bond filled with laughter and inside jokes. But from the moment they arrive, Sunshine feels the world darken with eeriness and she cannot place. And even if Kat doesn't recognize it, Sunshine knows that something about their new house is just creepy. 
On their first night in Richmond, Sunshine is awakened by the sound of footsteps coming from above, followed by a child's ghostly laugh. In the days that follow, things just get more frightening. The cat seems oblivious to the terror, insisting that Sunshine's imagination is getting the best of her. Determined to prove her that the mother... Determined to prove that her mother is wrong, Sunshine begins taking photographs, desperate to catch evidence that the supernatural supernatural presence. At her new school, Sunshine meets Nolan Foster, cute, if slightly bookish, classmate. Nolan has also a passion for photography, and is more importantly for ghosts. He offers to help Sunshine figure out exactly what's going on. What they uncover is a story that is much bigger than runs deeper than they could have imagined. She hardly believes it, but as the spirits haunting her house become stranger, it becomes clear that Cat is in danger. Sunshine learns that everything she thought she knew about her past has been wrong. So yeah, that's the haunting of Sunshine Girl. And yeah, pray for me. This is probably going to be the most scary, like, book haul I've gotten. I got another book, but I can't seem to find it right now. Let me check over here. Yeah, it looks like I can't seem to find it, you guys. I'm sorry. But, um, it was a book called The Whisperer. I got it for two bucks at a garage sale, and it seemed really interesting. And, of course, another haunted book, you know. I guess that's kind of my role now. Um, so, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any ideas of what I could do for future videos, just put it in the comments below. And, bye!